And I have learned it's got to be a real egg. Okay? Not the little egg substitute stuff. Okay, it's got to be the real egg. Now, what do we need proteins for? Hmm. Protection. That means antibodies that are going to be from the immune system. I need them for regulation. Regulation of what? Chemical reactions. Okay? They're going to do that by functioning as enzymes, hormones. I need them for structure. For example, Collagen. Ah, we've heard of that before. Yeah. Um, collagen. We'll get to that. We need them for muscle contraction, making up the actin and the myosin. For transportation, for example, hemoglobin, which will transport the oxygen. And then, Wait a minute, transportation in the form of an ion channel <laughs> ring, 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 ring. Anything going off? Anything, 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 anything? In the form of an ion channel? What did we just have a test on? What was your essay on? Plasma membrane, a sodium potassium pump, the voltage gated, the ligand gated. Okay? Anything coming together? When we have an action potential, it's going to be affecting those ion channels, which will let the ions through. Any connections coming through right now so far as to what we've talked about? Okay. We're given what's termed the recommended amount of how we're supposed to take these products in. And I really like to walk back and forth, but it's messing up the camera. Is it going to bother y'all if I walk back and forth behind y'all? Because i got to walk. Okay, because I can't think and not walk. You know, I can't talk and not be moving. So they give us these recommended amounts. And they tell us that the carbs should be 60% of our daily intake. Lipids should be 30%. Proteins, 10%. Does any of that sound kind of wacky to you? What might sound a little bit off? It looks like it should be the other way around, right? That it looks like it's backwards. The reason for that is because of that term, the calorie. Okay? When we hear the term calorie, we're referring to that amount of energy. Okay? And because of our bodies, a calorie, we have to measure in the kilocalories. So we don't really get into that a whole lot with foods, mainly because of it being a tad bit confusing. And it would probably make people's heads explode if they looked at something and it said, this product is 200 calories, when in reality, it's kilo that. And kilos how much? Three times more. So if they looked at something and saw 200,000, they would, you know, all right? So we don't, we don't do that. We keep it at something that's understandable for, for people, when in reality we're functioning at the kilo level. Now, the other products that we need, we're going to need our vitamins and we're going to need our minerals. What's the difference? For the most part, okay, when we're looking at vitamins, 
they're usually going to be something organic. So if it's something organic, what does that make you think about? What element do you think about? Carbon. So that is telling us that in some way, carbon is usually existing in the vitamin. When we look at what we have in our food, they, you know, we because we only need vitamins and minerals in a minute amount, we don't need them in high amounts. So our food is usually going to contain what we need. It used to. What I mean by that? How many of you think that right now, if you go to the grocery store and you buy your meats and your veggies and you eat them and cook them really healthy, like bake it in the oven and eat the salad, that you're getting your vitamins and your minerals that you need? Raise your hand. You're not. Why? Nope. Processed. What else? Hmm? The vitamins and the minerals used to be coming to us because of the soil and the area in which they would be raised and planted. Okay? The food stuff. We have now pretty much destroyed all the arable land that we can use for food production. When I say food production, I mean whether you're growing a plant or whether you're raising livestock. Because we've destroyed it, there's no more vitamins and minerals left in that ground to put into the root of a plant that you might eat or something that you might eat that ate that plant. And so now, we process everything. We have it added. You go buy milk or dairy product. Vitamin D added. Do you see that a lot on your foodstuffs? Because we've taken it out. Okay? There are some essential vitamins that we have to get from our diet. Other ones. In our body, our body can take certain substances and turn them into a vitamin we might need. Some of our vitamins that we take, they're lipid soluble. For example, vitamin D. Why I kind of point out vitamin D? Right now, this time of the year, do you think you're sufficient in vitamin D? Do you think you're sufficient in vitamin D during warmer months? Yeah. And there's a reason for that. Okay? It's because vitamin D, first of all, yeah, we've got to get it from our foodstuffs. Well, it's been added. All right, and because it's been added, all right, it's not natural for your body, so the body's absorption rate of it's not what it should be. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like if you over bake it or over boil it or over boil it or whatever the case might be, yeah, you're actually taking the nutrients out of it. The rawer it can be, now, I'm not talking about meat, but even still meat, but plants, okay, the more raw they are, the better they are for you. The more they're going to contain. If it's lipid soluble, this means it gets stored in the fat cells. Now, the vitamins that are lipid soluble, we have to have in very small amounts because they can actually become toxic because the body stores them, okay? Um, for example, the vitamin D that I mentioned, and we're gonna learn the importance of vitamin D 
And trust me, vitamin D is very important. If you're told that you're deficient in vitamin D, you have to be given like the supplement to take or whatever, they usually have a prescription um, vitamin D that can be given, and it's like 10,000 milligrams. That lets you know how much they're trying to put into your body, but not your body's not going to absorb all of it. Okay, but now vitamin D can be very important, and we're going to learn how it can make calcium deposit in the soft tissues of the body and create major problems. Other vitamins are water soluble. Vitamin C, for example. This time of the year, what do we think about vitamin C? Colds. All right. We think about, oh, I need to up my vitamin C intake. Fine. Go ahead. Double it. Triple it for the day. Do it throughout the whole winter season. But guess what? You're creating, creating expensive urine. The ones that are water soluble, what the body can absorb, it will. Okay? The rest is simply going to go out in the urine. So it creates very expensive urine. Now, some of these antioxidants, which we've mentioned, okay, because I mentioned that free radical, the H2O2, the hydrogen peroxide, and when we get a free oxygen flying around in the body, the reason that that's not good is because that free oxygen is very high energy, and in the body, it will bump into other molecules and make them break down. And so one of the things that they're trying to do is, you know, keep free radicals down. And so they tout the antioxidants. The antioxidants, hopefully, will come in and take a little bit of control and not have those little free oxygen molecules that will attach onto it and make it calm down. That's what the antioxidants do. Um, a lot of what they do damages the cells of the body, which as we know is not something that we want to have happen. When we talk about the minerals in the body, these are considered inorganic meaning no carbon is present. Now, the minerals kind of makes me think of salts. Okay, that's what I think of when I hear a mineral. Note what they do. Establish resting membrane potentials. We kind of mentioned that. We haven't got into it fully, okay? But you have an idea of what that means. Generate an action potential. Haven't really gotten into that a lot. But trust me, we will. Okay? Nervous system, for example, creating an action potential for something to happen. They're going to add strength to bones and teeth. They're going to function in being the buffers that we need in the body to help control the pH. They're going to be involved in osmotic balance. What is that? Osmosis. What is it? Water movement. What kind of environment did we say the cells need to exist in? Do we need to have one where the environment or the cell has too much or too little water? No. We need to make sure that there's balance across that plasma membrane. So, osmotic balance, that movement of the water, keeping the cells in an environment in which they can survive. They're going to be parts 
of a coenzyme, which was just mentioned under vitamins. For the hemoglobin, iron, we get our minerals from animal and plant sources and if you take a multivitamin you're getting a little bit you know from multivitamin a lot of what we do is really not coming from our food sources that we eat I mean 